Hi, welcome to this video where I will be taking you through a simple uh, example of a statically determinate beam analysis performed in a finite element uh, analysis software and we will see how the results correlate with the hand calculations. So the exercise for this particular example is to calculate the reactions for a simply supported uh, beam with an overhang. Uh, we have a sim uh, we have a pin support at point A as you can see in the figure and uh, there is a roller support at point C. The total length of the beam is 6 meters with 3 divisions of 2 meters each. Then you have uh, two types of loads applied on this beam. You have uh, 15 kN point loads at points B and D and uniformly distributed load of 2 kN per meter on the members B, C and C, D. So to start with the uh, demonstration, I will open up the software first. So you can open up the software either from the start menu and go into minus gen or you can go to the desktop and double click on the icon. Okay, so here is the blank minus gen window. You can go to file and click on new project to start a new file or new project. And that's the um, new model view. Model view is the modeling space which is green color. Okay. Now you will also find as soon as you click on new project there is a coordinate system at the center of the model view. So the, the Midas software follows the Cartesian coordinate system where X and Y are the horizontal axis and Z is vertically upwards. We can save the model by going to save and let's type in some name. Okay, so now we don't have to worry if we lose the information or not. It will be saved. So, uh, to begin with, first of all, let me give you a brief introduction to um, the different features or options that we have here and where to access them. So, just like any Windows based software, you have a main menu system at the top, like File, um, View, which is used for use, uh, displaying. Uh, the model in different ways then you have a model uh, menu so the model menu is used for accessing all the modeling or drawing tools like you can create elements or basically lines or faces or plates uh, using different uh, type of drawing tools which are similar to AutoCAD then you have some uh, properties assignments like uh, you can assign materials or sections to your members you can also assign boundaries like pinned or roller supports, uh, which we will do in this uh, particular example. Then uh, we also have loads in the uh, load menu. So any type of loads like point loads or element loads can be applied using the loads menu. Then the results menu helps you to see the results. For example, we will see reaction results for this particular example. Then uh, the tools menu has some useful options like unit system. You can change the unit system anytime in the modeling process. So for this particular example, we'll set the unit system to kilonewtons and meters and click OK. You will also notice that at the base of your screen, you have a unit system uh, option, kilonewtons and meters uh, shown here. You can change the units using the drop down. This here, the gray part is also called the model view. So this is where the modeling will take place and you can visualize the model graphically. On the right side are the display tools like zoom options, then you have rotate options, then you have uh, uh, the isometric view, top view, right view and front view. Then there are dynamic uh, view options like you have the dynamic zoom and dynamic pan and rotate dynamic so you, we will use these features one by one in the modeling process then uh, there is a tabbed toolbar which is basically a shortcut to all these modeling features so if you have to model an element create an element you can go to element and click here create elements to get that uh, feature the same feature which you can get from the menu system 
also all these many features can also be accessed by simply right clicking on the model view and accessing the different features here so you have different ways of uh, getting an access to the modeling tools okay so let us start uh, by setting up the analysis interface so first of all for any type of structure we can select if we want to do a three-dimensional modeling or a two-dimensional modeling now in this particular example you can see that we have we we can see the results only in two-dimensional so we can get the vertical and horizontal forces so we'll perform the modeling also in two dimensions so we go to model structure type and set up the uh, the two dimension plane or x z plane the x y plane is the horizontal plane so we want a vertical uh, plane so we select x z plane okay and as soon as we select it uh, uh, we we shall get all the forces and everything in the exit plane only so we should be very careful in the modeling we need to model everything in the exit plane apply all the loads and boundaries in the exit exit plane only so now we go to uh, the modeling wizard model and select structure wizard and create a beam so simple structures like beams columns or arches they can be easily modeled from the structure wizard so I go to beam and enter 3 at 2.0 which is 3 segments 2.0 meters or 2 meters each add and then it also asks for the material and section properties so each uh, beam element or each finite element these are all finite elements here and uh, the three finite elements we will be modeling so each element should have a material and section property so we have to define some materials we haven't defined any yet so what we can do is just initialize it with some material or section id1 all the materials and sections are saved within the program as numbers so if we enter a number so generally we enter one and one because these are the default values and uh, the element will be assigned with the material id1 and section id1 we click OK so that creates an element uh, it creates a beam basically with three finite elements three uh, beam elements then uh, we start defining some materials in section so we go to model properties and select material and add and we can define steel concrete or user defined any type of uh, user defined material so for this particular case let's select user define enter the name as material one one you can see the material id which we entered as one so let keep this as one this is the default number and we enter the modulus of elasticity or young's modulus value so 3 into 10 to the power 7 kilonewton per meter square and click ok so one material gets added close this then we go to model properties and section to define the dimensions for this uh, line add and select DB or user tab and select solid rectangle name this section so that is section 1 select user and select the enter the dimensions as 0.5 meters by 0.5 meters and click OK so that is 500 millimeters by 500 millimeters so beam OK and close this <coughs> Sorry. OK so as soon as you select or define the uh, section the shape appears on the screen now I will change this to the XZ plane or the front view okay Y is into the plane so this is the XZ plane view and that's your uh, section um, dimensions you can see now uh, we, we have uh, 
we have entered some nodes and elements in this structure so how to access the information for this model how to see what we have entered in the model so for that there is a works tree if you click on works here you will find that all the information for this model has been listed out in the works tree you can also highlight certain parts of the model by just double clicking on the works tree features for example if i want to highlight all the nodes in my model then I just double click on nodes to highlight all the nodes here so we have four nodes how uh, each node has a particular number associated with it if you want to see the numbers we can just click on node numbers here and you can also uh, to make it more clear we can change this display into a line display so by clicking on this option we get back just a line so these are the node numbers then if you want to see each and every element number we have three elements you can see here beams 3 double click and all the beams get highlighted you can click on the node the element number to see all the beam element numbers 1 2 and 3 now uh, talking about the highlight and selection option we have other ways of selecting the objects as well so that uh, that come under the category of selection unselection tools so if we were to unselect everything or remove the highlight from every element then we click on unselect all so everything is uh, unselected to select a particular element we can choose the select single option if i click on select single we get a cross here as shown on the screen and the cross here means that you are in the selection mode you can simply click on a given beam to highlight it or you can create a window so I can create a window like this to highlight from left to right to highlight everything within the window or I can create a window from right to left so that anything that touches the window and anything that is inside the window gets selected like this so that's these are all the unselection selection and unselection tools so i will again unselect all okay now how to pan or move this object this structure how to zoom in or zoom out we can simply use the mouse to do that uh, the middle mouse button if we scroll in or scroll out we can zoom in zoom out once you have achieved a particular zoom you can just click left click on the screen to escape the zoom mode and to pan or to nav to move this uh, object you can press the middle mouse button and a hand will appear and you can just move it if you want to rotate this model you can press control and press the middle mouse button and rotate the model okay also all this uh, things can be done from uh, the icons here so this is dynamic zoom so click on it to zoom in or zoom out dynamically then this is pan and this is rotate okay okay let's now define some supports for the structure so we have a pin support here and a roller support here so I'll unselect everything and go to model boundaries supports now the software does not understand what is pin and what is roller um, by the actual um, words pin and roller so we need to specify the exact properties of a pin support and the properties of a roller support so basically for every finite element software we have uh, for a given node we have six degrees of freedom three translation and three rotation that is uh, trans that is displacement along the x y and z axis and rotation about the x y and z axis which you can see on the left side here you have dx dy dz which are the displacements along the different axis x y z rx ry rz are the rotations about x y and z so a pinned support in our case 
basically allows rotation that means we will not apply any restraint to the rotation so that means all these boxes we will not tick we will leave them blank that means rotation is allowed for the pinned support however the pinned support restricts displacement vertically and horizontally so in our case we will apply a dx and dz restraint for the node number one so we have selected dx and dz restraint and now we will use the select single option here so click on select single and a cross here appears and we will create a small window just including the node here so remember to create the window from left to right or what you can do is uh, I'll unselect everything and again s select so you can just click on this node to highlight it okay and once you have highlighted it click apply and you will find a symbol of a support appearing you can see that it has got six small triangles two uh, you, some are green and some are black the black ones are the tri are the degrees of freedom which are not restrained so if you go from uh, the left the uh, from the right side and go clockwise you have the triangle one representing dx triangle two is dz dy and uh, triangle three is dz then you have rx ry and rz so we have restrained dx and dz so all the restrained ones are shown in green so dx is restrained green dy is free because we are actually we don't need to provide any dy support as we are only doing a 2d xz plane analysis so the dy is automatically restrained or not considered in the analysis and then dz is green then we have rx ry rz all black so rotation is allowed for the pin support next thing is applying a roller support for roller support horizontal motion is allowed but vertical motion is restrained so that means we need only dz this time so check off the dx option click dz and this time select node 3 and click apply so that's the roller support so that's how the supports have been defined now close this so uh, sometimes what happens is uh, if you close it from here the tree menu from the crossbar here so it the tree menu disappears and if you want to get back the tree menu you can just right click on this blank part on the right side and click on tree menu one and select the tree menu from here okay okay now uh, we will apply some loads on this structure so we start with the point loads first okay let's look at the drawing that we have in the PDF where the loads are applied so 15 kN and 15 kN at point B and D so first of all before applying any any type of load we give the load case a name because whenever we are seeing the results in the finite element analysis software it is the results are always displayed under a particular load case so we give the case load case a name so we go to loads static load cases and give a name to this load case say p p is the uh, notation for the concentrated point load 15 kilonewton so p and type is user defined add then uh, we can select another uh, another load case name this one is the udl again user defined and add so we have selected two names now close this then we will start defining some values or assigning some values to these names so load first uh, uh, type of load is the concentrated load of 15 kN which is nodal loads so select nodal loads here select the name as P and in the FZ category because the load is acting vertically downwards so we enter minus 15 minus because it's in the downward direction and use the select single option to select the two nodes in question so node number two and node number four here and click apply so two 
15 kN loads are applied now. The next thing is uh, we select uh, the the if we assign the uniformly distributed load. So I'll close this and again I'll go back to the PDF to see how the load is being applied. So if you see on the on the screen here, you will find that two kN per meter is applied from uh, the midpoint of member PC to the end of the beam and that is, mem that is point D. So we need to create a midpoint here. We only have three segments. So what we do is in the finite element software minus gen, we divide this particular member in two parts. So we go back to the model and we go to model elements divide. Okay. Now select the element with that we want to divide. So select single and just click on this element, element number two. Okay. And number of divisions is two. So two equal divisions we want and click apply. So now a, th a new node, node number five appears here and that element is now divided. So we have element number two and element number four for representing the member PC. So I'll close this and now we go back to loads, element beam loads. So for uniformly distributed loads or any type of load on the element, we use this option element beam loads. Now this time the name that we want is UDL. Okay. The load type is uniform load. So the symbol or the diagram can be seen here. Okay. Now select the elements which you want to uh, load or which you where you want to apply the loads. So I selected these two elements here. Okay. Just create a window. And the direction of application of the load is global Z or vertical direction. Okay. And the value of the load is, is minus two minus because it's in the downward direction. So minus two kN per meter. Always check the units for the load application. If they're not in the correct units, you can change it. You can always change it from the status bar here. Click apply and the load gets applied on the structure. Okay. Now if you want to, if you, if you wish to see or display the value of the loads, you can always right click in the works tree on the, on the load case and go to display to show the values. So this is 15 kN and right click display here to show minus two kN per meter. <coughs> Sorry. So I'll undisplay this and undisplay the nodes and element numbers so that it's more clear now. And we'll run the analysis. So to run the analysis, we go to analysis, sorry, analysis and say perform analysis. Or you can click on, you can press F5 or click on this button here. So perform analysis. Okay, analysis is done. The message window will show you how the different steps in the analysis are being carried out. Now, once the analysis is performed, you will find that uh, you will have two locks shown here. One unlock mode or the pre-processing mode and the other the active locked mode or called the post-processing mode. This is the mode where uh, you can see all the post analysis or, or, or post-processing results. So no modifications can be done in this mode. If you want to modify the model, say you want to change the length of a particular element or add another beam, you have to unlock the model first and then modify. So I'll go to post processing mode here to see the results. And for the results, first of all, since we have two different cases, we need to combine them because we want to see the reactions for the total loads on the structure. So combine these two. So we go to results and click on combinations and enter a combination. So give a name combination one. The type of combination is uh, additive or uh, the summation. S 
load cases to be combined are P and UDL both with the factor of multiplied by 1 and then close it then go to results and go to reactions reaction forces and let's select the combination so combination 1 FXYZ um, that is we include all the um, vertical and horizontal reactions at the same time in the display we have no moments for this particular uh, model so there no need to check on any MX and YMZ so FXYZ and we check on values to see the value of the reactions and we click on the small box here and change the decimal points for the display say two decimal points and click OK so that gives these reactions we have about 36.75 and minus 0.75 kN here uh, to show them uh, to, to get a bigger display of the numbers or the values we can use the display option so this icon which resembles a television screen or monitor if you click on this icon you can choose different modes of display so if I go to display option I, I have an option called font node output value so here I can change the font size of the node output so make it say 12 and click OK. So now you get a bigger display. So you have minus 0.75 kN on the support A and 36.75 kN and the support C. Let's see how the hand calculations uh, um, correlate with these values. So I'll go back to the PDF. So hand calculations we have this uh, model so naturally because all the loads are in vertical direction we will have zero horizontal reaction at uh, at the support A so we will only have VA and VC vertical reactions so which can be very easily found uh, very easily be found by simply taking moments first uh, uh, about A and equaling them to zero and then moments about C and equaling them to zero and by checking and we can check the results by uh, using a simple check that is total vertical forces should be zero so that is VA plus VC should be equal to the applied loading and that gives us the values the theoretical values here and the minus gen values over here so they are same exactly same so that shows that the analysis is performed correctly now we can also see the results in a tabular format if I go to results result tables and reaction I can select combination 1 and click OK that shows the reaction at node number 1 and 3 where the supports are applied node number 1 is support A node number 3 is support C and these are the vertical reaction FZ and the summation of the reaction that is the total uh, amount, loads acting on the structure is 36 kN. So that concludes this session of statically determined beam analysis and reaction calculations for the same beam. Uh, all the materials for this particular tutorial can be found in the description of this video, this YouTube video, and we have uh, many more examples in this channel. So stay tuned to the tutorials of Midas Chin channel on YouTube, uh, Midas UK page of YouTube, and we have further examples of statically indeterminate and truss analysis, buckling analysis, etc. So stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.